Herschel's a far infrared space telescope. It's essentially a far infrared observatory in space. A big mirror, it can point at whatever objects you happen to be interested in. And once it's flying, astronomers all over the world will be able to apply for time on it to point it at their favorite objects and see what they look like in the far infrared. That gives you insight into various bits of, of astrophysics that you can't get access to from the ground. So the main, most important thing about Herschel is the primary mirror. So this, this thing up here, this is a, a 150th scale model. So the mirror in real life is much bigger, three and a half meters across. And this gathers light and focuses it off the secondary mirror up here and down inside here, which is where the instruments sit. Now, the other important thing is, is this big tank, which is the, the cryostat. Uh, it's full of about 1,400 li litres of liquid helium, um, which keeps the instruments cold. Keep them, the instruments need to be cold to function. Um, and the instruments themselves sit within this cryostat right at the top here, which you can't see them at the moment, but our instrument spire sits about there. The other important thing about Herschel is this great big thing on the side, well, on the back, which is the sun shield. Now, at the second Lagrange point, the, the Earth and the Sun are always behind this sun shield. So there's no source of heat can actually shine directly onto the cryostat or onto the primary mirror. So that keeps everything cold. It means that the helium boil off rate is much reduced, keeps it alive for longer, and also means that we can look at very faint cold sources because we're not looking at them with a mirror that's glowing brighter than the sources we're looking at. Imperial has been involved with Herschel more or less since, since its very earliest days, since it, its conception. Professor Michael Rowan Robinson is one of the, um, to use the technical term, principal investigators for, uh, for, for Herschel. Um, what we specifically have been doing here since then is working on data analysis, um, data reduction tools, software, um, which will be used to take the data that comes down from the satellite and put it into a form, you know, go all the way from individual readouts from sensors on the satellite to images that you can put up onto a display and point at objects and say that's, that's a dusty galaxy and that's a star. The first thing that's really special about Herschel is that it's the biggest space telescope ever launched. It's got a three and a half metre mirror. It's got much more collecting power. The previous biggest mirror put into space for a far infrared telescope was 85 centimetres across. So there's a huge difference in size. Uh, and the Hubble Space Telescope's mirror is only two and a half metres. So it's even bigger than the Hubble Space Telescope. So that's the principal thing be behind Herschel. It collects much more light, allows it to go to much greater sensitivities, and also to see things in much higher resolution because it's got a, a stronger focusing power. There's a huge amount of stuff that we hope to see with Herschel. It ranges from looking at the properties of trans-Neptunian planets, so these are the, so the, the minor bodies in our own solar system. Um, the Kuiper Belt is one place where they're found. The Oort Cloud. It's the sort of objects that are like Pluto, only smaller, and there are meant to be loads of them, but they're very difficult to find. So that's the, the, the local side of things. Um, further away, we can look at the physics of star formation within our own galaxy. Uh, we can look at the physics of star formation in nearby galaxies where we can see things in, in great detail. And further away, the kind of, sort of, kind of astronomy that we do here in the astrophysics group at, at Imperial, we're looking at dusty galaxies, seeing how they are triggered, what their relationship is to the galaxies we see more generally, and their relationship to objects like quasars, the most extreme luminosity objects in the universe. Our biggest role in Herschel is in the two major, the two biggest, in fact, extragalactic observing programs. One's called Hermes. That's got 900 hours of time to do deep surveys, look at the very distant objects, the faintest ones, and work out the, the evolutionary history, if you will, of dusty galaxies. We also are involved with Atlas, which is the largest open time proposal, which was competed for an open competition with astronomers from around the world. What ATLAS aims to do is to cover a large area of the sky, 550 square degrees, and look at dusty galaxies in the local universe and at moderate distances through Herschel observations of that large area. So effectively setting a 
a zero distance baseline against which the results of Hermes can be compared. So we get an idea of the whole history of dusty galaxies uh, throughout most of the lifetime of the universe. Herschel's designed to have a lifetime of three years in operational mode, which effectively means three and a half years up in orbit. The thing that controls this is its supply of liquid helium, which keeps the instruments cold and functioning. Once we run out of liquid helium, that's the end of the mission.